Hey everyone and welcome back or welcome to my channel. Today's video will be a think piece on the current state of the Dark Horses of 4th and 5th Gen Girl Group Edition. To be considered a Dark Horse is pretty subjective and really depends on the perception of the person and so the plan is for us to describe why they seem like a Dark Horse to me before talking about what I think about them and stuff that could be done to push them to that next level. The only two criteria that I had compiling the list of groups was that they firstly had to be from a smaller or lesser known company and and then there had to be some justifiable potential in that group. But yeah, before I start, I'd appreciate it if you could like and subscribe to my channel. Without further ado, let's start off with the first group. You're so dumb, dumb, da -dum, dumb, dumb, da -dum, dumb. Starting off, we have Everglow, who I feel like were the OG dark horses within K-pop 4th gen. Despite Yuhua being big in China, Yuhua's career division is a different story, with what seems to be restrictions or potential neglect occurring as we start to hear more management issues coming out from different Yuhua artists. I mean, they aren't completely small company vibes and could probably take losses to some degree because their China division makes bank to potentially offset some of that loss. However, there will always be be a limit to how much they will go all out for an artist. For Everglow, they have always had a noticeable international lean regarding their fan base. This is all right technically since it has allowed them to sustain their career. However, considering their main promotions are in Korea, this could cause slight concerns that they have not been able to transcend or even level out their ratio of domestic to international fans. What didn't help them was that they had a two year long hiatus that coincided with ushering the second big wave of rookie monsters, leading to some of their attention slowly dipping. The hiatus originally stemmed from cultural differences between Korea and China exhibited by Yeren's behaviour, which has also been another underlying issue for Everglow that adds complexities to their situation. The political relationship between the two countries has complications and thus the constant association of Everglow with Yuhua, who are well known for being a Chinese company, there just seems to be these negative associations from Korea. Korean listeners that limit their full potential within Korea. With around two years left, I can see them being able to rise a bit more, but not completely to be in discussions of being one of the top fourth gen girl groups. The best direction for their remaining career would probably be to ensure consistent comebacks with more of an international push, similar to what they're doing now after Slay promotions through another overseas tour. It seems to be what could help them sustain their career, capitalize off their success, and just maintain that worthiness to continue further investments from Yuhua as they usher in more K-pop groups. <laughs> Next, we have Stacy, who I would say was one of the first groups in the 4th gen to properly lift up their company from basically nothing. Despite having a well-known producer who could make great hits for them, this doesn't always equate to instant success, as discussed in my older video that I did comparing Stacy to Brave Girls and Bugaboo, who all were in companies founded by well-known music producers. Stacy would garner most of their initial success from their first comeback of ASAP, and then would continue to build on that moment momentum with each release. I would kind of equate their success similar to Cosmic Girls, who has seen a constant increase in their success with each comeback, but still aren't quite noticeable by viewers as a noteworthy competitor. I think one of the reasons for this is that Stacey seems to lack that wow factor. They have such great music, and the group just works cohesively. However, I don't know if it's just me, but there isn't that one specific wow thing or even member that just notably distinguishes the group like that. What didn't help would be that second wave of rookie monsters that I talked about before, which would introduce newer groups from influential companies and thus began that slight shift in attention away from them. Another thing that might be another issue, but also not even sure if I'm interpreting it correctly, was their initial response to Teddy Bear. During an episode of Knowing Brothers, they described their initial reluctance to the song. To me, it sounded like they thought it was too cute, which low-key, I thought that really matched the vibe of their prominent concept as a group. However, if my interpretations are correct, then it seems like they may want to slowly shed that concept or just tone it down, which I feel like this could
could be a minor issue in distinguishing the group considering the lack of teen crush and cute concepts in the fourth gen. This doesn't mean the end of Stacy if they were to pivot, however, the title tracks that don't follow this concept have been met with mixed reception. I mean, So Bad got a decent reception, but it wasn't too attention grabbing for the general public. Beautiful Monster was met with negative reception, and kinda led to what most people say was their first quote unquote flop era. And then Run To You was highly praised and one of their better eras. These three releases highlight the potential for Stacey to become more versatile in their releases, however, this will kinda require Black Eyed Peelsong to ensure he has the right songs to release for them. There seems to be nothing inherently bad about Stacey's situation at the moment, and so it really just comes down to consistency and continuing to effectively highlight the members to further enhance the group. This love is mania, 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 Comprised of former G-Friend members, VVs has presented an interesting dynamic change through the crumbs of being in the same former group. While it's easy to say that based on G-Friend's relative success, they should also be able to match that same success, this seems to be not completely true, as we have seen all of the post-G-Friend soloists slowly lose the hype that they've gained from being in G-Friend. The only exception is the only post-group that came out of G-Friend being VVs, who has seen a slightly different trajectory and has been able to both show a new side to them while maintaining a decent size of its original fanbase. Despite the massive wave of attention, recently gained from their title track of Maniac, this is not considered the norm for them as their releases as VVs so far has garnered mixed reception. At worst, the releases have been seen as basic for the group. The trio made a smart decision through overcoming the initial identity and concept building through experimenting and getting more comfortable as a trio through their appearance in Queendom Season 2. However, it is still not clear what concept that they're trying to go for and thus Despite the recent success, their next focus should be on either deciding whether to double down on moving forward with the concept similar to their 2023 era of Pull Up and Maniac, revert back to their 2023 era sound of Bop Bop and Love Aid, or even continue to experiment with another concept or sound. Next up is Triple S, who are on this list for two reasons. Firstly, because they got awarded the Best New Female Artist in 2023's Mnet Awards, which technically isn't the only award show and can even be sus at times, but I feel like recognition is recognition. The other reason is because the CEO of their company was also the creative director for Luna, and so this might be me being a little delulu, but I was kind of drawing the parallels between Triple S and Luna to some degree. I mean, there are obviously differences between the two groups, however, despite the differences, I just feel like there's potential for Modhouse to use a similar formula created from their experience with Luna. I mean, one key distinction that sets them apart from Luna, but also most groups, is the unlimited subunits with already 8 different subunits to their name. With this 8 so far and more to come, this gives Triple S an advantage of having both a range of concepts that they can trial with different members to both highlight members that suit certain concepts while also giving them a range to just experiment in general. The inclusion of actual fan participation in progressing these comebacks also adds that extra layer of connections from the participants and thus there is a stronger relationship as the fans get more of a say. The only issues that I can see at this moment would be that everyone sees things differently and there is no one way of seeing how Triple S should go about and so this could eventually lead to inner fandom conflict if the fan participation is not managed well. Another issue with the group would also be the overhead costs to maintain such a group, considering they will become 24 members in total. Having so many members kinda indirectly means that they really can't falter or have too many quote unquote unsuccessful comebacks without going into relative debt. As a result, they will need to tread carefully in order to ensure that a mutual relationship between Modhouse and Triple S is nurtured throughout their career. Building that relationship between the CEO and the group It just helps set a foundation of complete dedication to the group even in times of losses and so Triple S would need that leeway to slowly continue to build up their fanbase as a relatively new rookie group. (laughs) 
And finally, we have the newest rookies from this list of Kiss of Life. Having just passed half a year into debuting, they have already managed to capture the attention of international listeners while slowly growing their domestic fan base. Having both the skills and potential, their releases have fortunately complemented this and have clearly distinguished themselves within the competition of K-pop. I mean, the ability to create unique one-off variations to each of their different year-end performances while also displaying such charismatic charm, it's clear that they're bringing something different that is bringing life to the new wave of K-pop groups. As for issues, their company of S2 Entertainment had only one experience with having a girl group and that didn't end that well as they abruptly disbanded a few days before their first year anniversary. However, like I said in another video that I did about the two groups, there are and were many differences that explains why Kiss of Life could be different. Other than that, I would say it's too early to notice many issues at hand with them since they only have 6 months to their name. Obviously, they'll need more time within the industry before we can start to see whether their success will continue to grow, stagnate, or even plateau. Their first year as a group could even just be the hype of just being really new. And so with more groups debuting and other existing groups making comebacks, we'll honestly just have to see with time to make more definitive comments about their trajectory. The only generic but still relevant goal that they would need to work on is maintaining interest and continuing to build on their success with the right moves, which is part potential and part luck. A combination of right timing and consistency, and then Kiss of Life could be strong contenders as one of the top 5th gen girl groups, or even potential leaders. Final thoughts, there are just so many girl groups that I could have talked about. This video was slightly just an outlet to talk about multiple groups in one, as opposed to giving a dedicated video on just one group. Do note that I did exclude some groups for different reasons, but one noticeable group that almost made the list for me was Billy, who I would also kind of think is similar to Haiki. They both received viral moments and thus you would assume that as long as they build on that momentum then it should only be up from here right? However, for me I think Billy kind of seems like they're going towards that dream catcher or even Mamamoo route of attention. Like musically they're so distinct in their sound however it doesn't feel too general public friendly and so that's kind of why I think they would instead garner that niche but loyal fan base to sustain their career. Also, better late than never, but slight disclaimer, since I did look at the negatives for each group to kinda see what might be holding them back, there is so much that can change from when I make these videos. I mean, my black swan video is a perfect example of initially being worried about the group, to them having such a good comeback run with Karma, and then still having constant flows of promotions considering the size of DR music and even in comparison to the norm of basically nothing during their debut to close to me era. Like, this shows that anything could truly happen to both groups included in this video and groups that I haven't mentioned. But yeah, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and let me know your thoughts on my thoughts on the state of these Dark Horse Go groups. And feel free to drop a comment on other groups that you think should be in this conversation or just any other groups in general that you kind of want to discuss regarding their current state. Also, I have another slight question if you've made it this far. Do you like that I have timestamps that outright state the groups that I'll discuss. I was just kind of thinking about whether it'll be more interesting to be a bit more mysterious and name them group 1, group 2, group 3, etc. Or like, is that me doing the most and just kind of stick to what I'm doing right now? But yeah, as for my next video, it'll follow a similar theming to this video, but it's also kind of a sequel to another video that I did. Currently, I'm looking into the downfall, but also the current state of YG Entertainment. With the slow exodus of artists within the company for many years now, it feels like YG will kinda need to do more in order to maintain his legacy, but also the YG brand. But yeah, still doing more research into that, and so if you're interested in hearing more, then please like and subscribe to keep up to date, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!